Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I'm very excited about this video. I've been waiting for it uh, since yesterday, and then I was out running errands. I was like, I need to do a screen capture, and then I came up with such an amazing solution. <laughs> this is this is a channel first. Uh, so uh, anyway, um, I was talking to a friend, and he sent me this screen capture yesterday, um, and I couldn't believe it. But then I sort of could. Um, things make sense when you look back far enough. So uh, yesterday, Aubrey Citizen uh, tweeted this and then also put it on his Facebook. I kind of looked before and after a couple days. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if this is paranoid to see if this is like a bit, you know what I mean? Like, you know how like SJWs are always into like, oh, we're all doing this. Ooh, my name is spooky Aubrey Citizen. So I was like, maybe there's a new thing where you pretend to be reasonable. <laughs> like, but no, no. Uh, Sweetcast just did a video yesterday where one of the usual suspects is like hunting Nazis and wanting to be patted on the back for it. Um, so uh, no, this looks like a completely sincere thought. I believe it's in response to seeing a bunch of, you know, like half a day of hot takes after the uh, the debate a few days ago, I just felt ill, like <laughs> actually ill. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, let's just jump right into it. And <laughs> this is the channel first. I'll do a little screenshot right here. So I I didn't want to paraphrase it. I wanted to read it exactly. But when you know I'm doing the the video, I'm in my car right now. I'm just seeing my dashboard. So. I'm actually looking at the McDonald's bag. <laughs> I wrote it on there. So uh, Aubrey wrote, uh, a few years back, I did irrevocable, irrevocable damage. However you say it. I'll, I'm going to start again. A few years back, I did irrevocable damage to my career after getting caught up sorry i can't i haven't seen my own cursive in like decades all i've seen for cursive well no maybe maybe a decade <laughs> sorry i just ate that's why i'm coughing um yeah probably when i was in afghanistan was the last time i wrote letters but even afghanistan was was almost e all emails maybe just like the first couple weeks we had an mwr tent you know basically right after starting our fob like a couple weeks so and then I wrote a lot of letters the first time in Iraq like 2003 so I'm, I'm not used to seeing my own cursive I can't really read it I'll start up I'll, I'll start again a few years back I did irrevocable damage to my career after getting caught up in online political histrionics don't make the same mistake I did take a step back assess what truly matters what really makes a difference and realize it I, I can't read it hurt on proud media oh and realize it ain't on social media so that was a little fun experiment it's, it's soaking through like I didn't have the hash brown so it's all like wet on the bottom uh, but uh, anyway so um, I was shocked uh, but then very <laughs> happy to see stuff like this, but then kind of not that shocked because I've been seeing a trend. Um, and the trend is that people need to pay their rent, <laughs> like straight up and down. I am seeing things I that would have been unbelievable six months ago. Six months ago, if this did exist, it would have been some sort of bit. Like, let's say what the other side wants is to say, <laughs> like, uh, but no, this seems absolutely uh, sincere. So Aubrey Citizen, for people who don't remember, he's been in the industry for a very long time. He was a Marvel editor back, uh, you know, in the around 9-11, uh, kind of famously. Uh, he went to other bits of media and then he started a writing career, I don't know, five, ten years ago. He got into G.I. Joe. Um, and uh, it was weird. It was the other G.I. Joe book. They always have the G.I. Joe, a real American hero. And then they have the other book, which usually takes alternate takes. This one was kind of like 
more based around the cartoon and kind of almost like a sci-fi professional wrestling type of bit. But it was very, very, very heavily SJW. This is the one that had that, uh, they changed Salvo uh, from a white man with a shaved head because that's problematic. Sorry there, Patrick Stewart. Um, <laughs> to uh, a morbidly obese uh, Samoan woman with a huge gut in a military special operations force. Okay, so, and there was just lots of SJW-ness just in general. And it was just weird, and he was being combative with people on the forums. And then, I'm not going to harp on it, but it was 9-11 in 2017. And he basically, he had a hot take that if you weren't in, I think he even specified lower Manhattan like he was. You were just a poser, and it was crocodile tears, and you don't know what it was like. And you, and you were just trying to get attention. This was pretty darn shocking um, uh, and then that either led to him uh, being taken off the book it's kind of a trick question because they wrapped up G.I. Joe then they they read it as Scarlet Strike Force and then the initial orders for um, issue one were so incredibly low that it was canceled before it came out I think the first issue orders were like 3,800 something like that um, the deal with first issue is you usually settle at about half of what the first issue is. Lots of people will try a first issue if the orders are that low. So they canceled it before. And then, uh, I, don't need, I don't need to get into all that type of stuff. So he wrapped that up. Um, he didn't really do that much. He had a, a book on wrestling. Uh, then he had a book called No One Left to Fight. I read and recommended, I think, the first two issues. Then I kind of lost interest. Um, uh, I didn't, it wasn't bad. It, it just really required you to know, like, Pikachu, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Z, and that type of stuff. And, and I really don't know that type of stuff. And then there also wasn't a lot of fights. It was kind of like, what if the dragon, it was like, what if these characters got older and got married and had families? It's like, I, yeah. I just like them to fight. I, I, they did fight a little bit, but it was a lot of like talking and couches. It was it was an interesting take, um, and I think if I would have been into that, you know, Dragon Ball, Pokemans, whatever type of stuff, um, uh, Beyblade. I'm trying to remember like every syndicated cartoon from like the late 1990s, um, but uh, so he's you know he's kind of kept up the front. Everything's fine, uh, but. If you look at the track record, really not a lot of stuff. No One Left to Fight started actually quite well. Um, and then it just kind of fizzled. And he's still kind of promoting it, you know, because he's got trade paperbacks to sell. And, and that's cool. But um, I think it's taken a couple years. But he's he's looking at it and he's seeing, you know, you know, you can look at a trajectory. I, I have all of my books, all of the sales. I, I have, you know, the amount of backers. I even separate it into, you know, first month and then everything after the first month I have graphs I have trend lines you know I can see the direction uh, I'm going in and he can too and he's basically got like like, like five data points you know like a, four issues of a mini series or it might have been five or six and then he's got a book and it's been three years and he's like I had steady work until I you know decided to be you know Mr. Hot Take and it just hasn't been good since um, and this is I mean, it's sad anytime someone has, you know, like a, rough, a rough time in life, but it's good when they can have some sort of perspective on it and say, okay, probably shouldn't have done that. And I'm also going to, you know, care enough about my peers to let them know. Um, I've seen, you know, things like this, you know, I recommend uh, books by people who have attacked me and attacked others. And basically the, the common, you know, uh, you know, comment is, this actually does look cool, but I'm not going to buy someone who called me and all my friends Nazis. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, I mean, how am I supposed to argue with that person? No, no, you should, yeah, I mean, are they, you, you can be, are they, uh, how am I going to say this? Have you seen any of those people who are attacking others try to say like, hey, kind of thinking like this whole thing where we attack the customers, it was probably a bad idea. We probably just should have just, just bit our tongue. And just sell the stuff because now they're all gone. I mean, Sana Aminat's doing fine, you know. She's transitioning to over to working in Hollywood like, you know, she always intended. But most of y'all are being left behind. One of the things that took me forever to notice 
is the people who um, were most vociferous about attack the fans and SJW stuff, a lot of those people were like in their 50s. It was like, you know, the, the Gail Simone, Mark Wade, Ron Mars, Kurt Busiek types. Some of these people are mere, you know, half a decade away from retirement age. In America, you can start drawing Social Security when you're 62. So why not just <laughs> encourage the most radical things that are going to... They know they can still get enough. Oh, I got this little, uh, you know, video game. Oh, I, I got this for, you know, this. Oh, I got a little TV uh, writing deal. Oh, I got an option. They, they are confident enough in the trajectory of their career that they're like, you know what, this whole thing can just explode behind us we're, like we're in a scene in a Mark Wahlberg movie. It's it's just fine. It's, I, I don't really don't care. I just like to see things burn. It's funny to me. Um, but for someone who, like Aubrey, who I don't know his na age, uh, I'm going to guess he's 40. He's going, oh shit. I got to work for like 22 more years and it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to work in comics because it's being destroyed. And even in my own career, I've done things to, you know, help uh, make that happen. Um, again, you know, uh, you can watch a Sweetcast uh, video from that. I just had to skim it. Um, it just kind of like with the uh, debate, just watching people just be ugly and awful to each other. It's kind of lost its entertainment value. Uh, and especially when um, one of the things that's been a huge eye opener is I kind of always knew that most of the people in comics were like super broke. But um, there was a couple of news articles, uh, you know, and exposés and hashtags um, earlier this year that really, really hammered it home. Like when if when you realize that like Marvel editors make like thirty to forty thousand, you're like, oh, I mean, I, I always kind of knew it was, but when you get like solid numbers, like for New York City, I that I did that other uh, guy a couple of days ago, his blog. He, he worked like his fingers to the bone basically every single day for a year. 33 grand, you know, gross, 24 grand take home. You're like, oh, this is shocking. So why are people acting, let's just say more normal right now? And, and this is, this is normal. I mean, uh, getting over stuff, forgiveness, uh, for, for, forgiveness and all that stuff was kind of normal for all of human history until about three years ago when SJW started, you know, weaponize uh, uh, apologies. One of the things that I, I still am kind of shocked that I thought this was going to be the time when um, people were going to realize things had gone too far. Do you remember like two years ago when I was doing a uh, hashtag move the needle on Twitter? And it had a good start. And then what happened is the 12 psychos on Twitter would actually contact such and such writer or such and such artist when they retweeted, you know, a fan saying, hey, I really like uh, Dank Man number three, uh, you know, written by X. And then you, you know, you, add, you uh, what is it called? Adding? <laughs> I've been gone for a while. You add, and then the writer says, hey, uh, thanks. Uh, glad you liked it. And then some literal psychopath would contact the writer. It's like, you probably didn't know this, but this person is a bad person who talks to bad people and I'm sure you don't want to. Be. And, and so the person would be like, Oh, sorry. I'm like, Oh, when has it ever been normal to track the associations of strangers? I mean, outside of East Germany during world war or the cold war. I mean, that wasn't normal, but it was the norm. Um, and people just kind of put up with it because, you know, people are trying to go for the path of, least resistance. You're like, oh, you know, this is the thing I got to put up with. Um, uh, but eventually, you know, work started drying up and the people who aren't four and a half years away from being able to get social security, they go, oh, shit, I, I, I started a family. I, I gotta, I gotta pay my rent for like 20 more years. Like this is basically all I know how to do. So one of the things I've been seeing lately is I've been seeing people, you know, people send me screenshots. Such and such normie pro talking to <gasps> canceled person. And they're just talking normal. And I'm like, okay, I remember this. They'll get like two tweets in and then someone will scare them and then they'll, they'll, they'll block them or they'll, no, I'm, I'm just seeing like, they're kind of casual. They're like, oh wait, we're allowed to talk 
to people again. And there's a couple things. SJWs really, and the 12 psychos, they really overstep their their um, uh, their mandate. You know, they're like, oh, you're allowed to do this. I mean, uh, especially the uh, the Warren Ellis, Jay Lee, and then the dynamite thing. Warren Ellis got his life destroyed for consensually hooking up with women 20 years ago. Jay Lee had a firm attempt, uh, a, a willful, malicious attempt to destroy him t- his entire life for drawing a variant cover that everyone knew he drew a year and a half ago. And then Dynamite got destroyed because they were, what were they doing? Pre-press for Cecil's book? What the hell? So especially, you, you can carve off the whole Dynamite Cecil thing, but especially with Jay Lee and Warren Ellis, people saw, they're like, wait, these are like lifelong Democrats. These are liberals. These are people who had all the right views and said all the right things and they were just destroyed over nothing, over boredom. Oh, and the, the Sean Gordon Murphy, the, the love bombing accusations, you're like Scott Snyder, when that Whisper Network was plotting to attack him for emotional labor, which is him being chatty on phone calls. <laughs> like all of a sudden everyone realized they're like, oh, we were told you had to be a bad, bad, terror, bad person to get destroyed, but apparently you can get destroyed for anything. Boy, I really wish I hadn't been calling my, you know, you know, they're, they're looking at each other. They're like, maybe we shouldn't have called the fans white supremacists for four years straight because you can lose your peers. I mean, Ethan lost all of his peers, you know, in a vicious round of political discrimination led by Sam Humphreys, you know, back in DC in uh, 2016. He lost most of his peers. To me, you know, every, oh, I lost my friends. You lost acquaintances. You didn't lose any actual friends. But he did lose a lot of his peers who turned against him. Or, you know, I think in the in uh, a larger case, were just afraid to go near him. Oh, you know, if you talk to Ethan, oh, boy. Um, but now people are starting to talk. And uh, the 12 psychos on Twitter are kind of in a timeout because they're like, oh, shit. Yet we try. We like. You got a little too excited. You like to. You like to hurt people, and you hurt a little bit too many people. And now everyone realizes, like, oh, we're all targets. We're all targets. We are all. Oh, uh, five years ago, you said a joke. Uh, I mean, these psychopaths. They will spend weeks manually combing through every single like you put on every single tweet in the history of your account. Like they're. They're crazy people. <laughs> I wasn't exagger- I wasn't exaggerating when I said these are psychos. Like these are actual crazy people. Um, so uh, you know, they, uh, too many people were attacked. Too many people who thought they were on the right of, side of history found out that you can be targeted for being nice to someone, being chatty on the phone after you discuss work, and they're 38, 40, 44. 45 and they're like shit what am I gonna do so they're trying to get back to normal and you know I said this you know people are pretty forgiving the problem was the length of time people can understand you know I remember like you know 2012 2008 I think it was 2012 I said it's like like a little hot take in one of my Facebook groups people were like really dude but like I calmed down the next day you know what I mean it wasn't four years of that. The problem is that the media and SJWs on Twitter and, you know, actual crazy people have encouraged not just a day or two of hot takes and venting, which is normal, but four years of it. Like I said, people can forgive, you know, a couple hot takes, a couple, you know, wild, you know, you know, days. But when someone looks at you and says, you and your peers attacked me and my friends pretty much every day for four years you really would need the the you know the patience of a saint to forgive that person you might forgive them like hey yeah like you know no hard feelings but are you gonna buy their stuff probably not um so i think the people who are going to survive and i don't want to say their name because i don't want to get them targeted but i've seen normie pros kind of talking to you know canceled people you know getting advice on things I think that's our, that's going to be the people who are going to be able to survive and thrive. They're going to be able to transition to uh, crowdfunding. And if you spent the last four years 
calling the fans Nazis and white supremacists. I'm sorry if you had a change of heart, that's cool, but I, I would honestly suggest you go retrain in something. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic, this is actual advice. IT in the medical field, these are, these are solid fields, you know, good income, and you'd be surprised how quickly you can get an entry-level job in them. I mean, I, I basically, you can watch a couple, you can like after work or at night for a couple months on free YouTube videos, you can learn how to get an entry-level IT job. With, uh, with um, medical field, nursing, there's, I forget which one it is. Is the, which is the like the most entry level? Like you can literally go take like a six month course and qualify for that one. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you spent four years calling the fans Nazis and white supremacists, no matter how much of a, you know, change of heart you have, you need to, you know, change your career. You do. If you had a couple hot takes here and there, I don't even know if you need to do a direct apology. You just, honestly, just talk to people. People are so happy to be talked to after being treated like lepers for four years. So, okay, so, all right. I ran this into the ground. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description, and I'll have new comic reviews up all this weekend. Thanks, bye.